Hello and welcome everybody. My name is the IT guy and in this video we will have a look at how to mount the NTFS uh, file system in Linux. Now you might be wondering why am I in Windows when we are mounting a file system in Linux? Well basically you'll have to do a few tweaks if you're dual booting Windows and Linux. Because when you are using Windows and you shut it down, uh, Windows actually just keeps a few files hidden here and there so it keeps the drive sort of hostage uh, during the shutdown process and that's why Linux cannot access it properly uh, when it comes to writing files. So you'll have to do a few changes and we're going to do that in the control panel. So you're going to go over, over to the start menu and we're going to type in control.exe and this will open up the control panel. Then we're going to go, we're going to go into power options. We're going to go into choose what the power buttons do. And we're going to go into change settings that are currently unavailable and we'll need to make sure that we turn off this uh, turn on fast startup. So you're going to have to turn that off like that save the changes and then we're going to shut Windows down and we're going to boot into Linux and make a few changes over there as well. So we've booted back into Linux and I've immediately opened up the terminal. You can open up the terminal by doing Control alt t or maybe it's the Windows key T or you just open up the application menu over here. So you type in the following to start off. So you're going to type in f uh, sudo fdisk minus l and this will list all of the disks in your system and we want to know oops looks like i mistake my password over here and uh, we want to look for uh, the disk that we want to we want to mount so in my case it's this st500 this is my seagate drive and you can easily find it by uh, just looking for whatever disk you want to mount so you probably know at least what kind of disk you want to mount so you'll have to search the the brand of the disk so we have a couple of different brands here We're, over here we have Kingston, we have SanDisk, but in my case it's this ST500 and if I go down a little bit I'll find this slash dev slash sdc2 which contains a 500 gigabyte um, partition and a Microsoft basic partition basically means that it's an NTFS drive. So we want to scroll down again and then we want to make sure that we have the right drivers installed so we want to do sudo apt install ntfs dash 3g and then it's going to tell us that uh we already have the latest package uh, you can you can ignore this this is something that i did on my computer and don't worry about that but you can see over here ntfs dash 3g is already the newest version if you get something like that then that means that the ntfs 3g is installed if it's not installed you'll have to install it it will just ask you if you want to install it and you just press y and enter and you uh, can go along from there so now we know two things uh, we know that we have the ntfs driver we know the, our device name so our device name in our case is sdc2 that can be whatever in your case you don't have to exactly copy what i did you have to remember which drive you want to mount of course so in my case it was sdc3 uh, sdc2 and we have ntfs 3g the driver installed and now we have to um, create a folder where we want to mount the drive so in linux it always works like this you have a folder and you mount the drive in that folder the folder that you want to mount it in has to be empty of course you mount it in an empty drive and then the drive gets, gets populated with the contents of the disk okay so first of all let us go into um, ls slash media so if we see ls slash media we'll see that our username pops up in there and that means that we can use that folder to uh, to create a new uh, we can use that folder to create a new mount point so if you're using anything else but Ubuntu then you're probably not then you might not have that drive this uh, so the slash media slash uh, your username uh, drive uh, folder then you can just create it in your own user folder so you can also just do something like uh, so mkdir slash home slash your username slash mount or something like that that will create that folder but if you want to do it within the if you're using ubuntu and you want to create that in this folder over here you'll do you have to do sudo mkdir oops mkdir mkdir like that and then you'll just specify your folder so i'm going to do mount for example and i'm going to use mount so i'm actually going to remove it immediately but if you would do ls 
uh, you'll see that that folder has been created and you can use that folder to mount your drive so i already have backup and data and and i'm going to use this backup uh, folder over here because it's the drive that i want to mount so uh, just for the sake of this video i'll just quickly uh, remove that mount drive uh, that mount folder because i actually don't really need it <clears throat> okay so we have now we have three things we have our ntfs driver we have the device name and we have a mount point so our mount point is the, the is the um so the, the mount point is the folder or the directory we just created okay so now we can go uh, do the magic actually so you just have to do sudo nano slash etsy slash fs tab and you can open up your fs tab file and in the fs tab file you'll have a lot of entries over here and we're going to focus on the last one over here and i already filled it in so uh, we're going to do that uh, actually we're going to do that from from the beginning so we're going to do slash dev slash sd sdc2 which is our device name then we're going to do slash media slash herbert which is my directory i created and we're going to choose backup so this is again <clears throat> the folder that you choose yourself so if you're running ubuntu i would suggest you just use that use that media drive uh, that media directory because uh, it's very handy that it's just all packed together we type in ntfs-3g to tell it that it's actually have to it actually has to mount it as an ntfs drive we give it read and write permission we say our user id equals 1000 and this is by default if you only have one user on your um <clears throat> on your linux machine the user id is going to be 1000 if you have multiple then you have to make sure that your user id is correct and you can do that by just typing in id in the terminal and it will give you the user id and the u and um, group id as well so we're going to do uid is 1000 group id is also 1000 umask is uh going to be uh our uh permissions so if you want to set your permissions to everybody can read and write and uh, uh execute then you'll do zero 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 but we want to do a little bit more security so we want to say that i as a user itself as the owner of that drive or, or of that folder i can uh, read write and execute but anybody else can only read and execute just like that and we're going to do the same for f mask equals zero zero two two and i think we just have to uh provide like zero to flag it uh to not dump anything and then zero to flag it for no uh, fdisk scans and then we just want to do control o and then we're going to enter to save it and we're going to see if everything is actually correct so okay we have everything set up the way it should so we have the same entries everywhere and it looks like this is uh looking quite good so we can do control x to exit out of that now we're gonna do uh we're gonna just do a, a reboot a quick reboot of the system and we're gonna see if everything worked out the way it should have so quick reboot let's now go into our file manager over here let's go into backup and as you can see i can access everything and if i right click it i can create a new folder all right there we go i can also create new text files i can do anything here i can also browse the contents of this folder so you can see everything is still in here and everything works the way it should i can also delete files so actually everything is in place uh, and everything works the way it should work so yeah this was just me showing you how to mount an ntfs drive properly in uh, linux I hope you like this video, guys, and if you did, leave a like and a comment below. And if you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.